Good morning and welcome to my Ascension Messages. My name is Bobby Richardson and I will be your guide for today. I channel through the Palladians, the Arcturians, Mother Earth, the Cyanians. The Cyanians are high-end Palladians that have evolved so much that they really reside close to oneness. I think some people will call them blue rays and um, they see a lot of perspectives and understandings of different levels of awareness and they can also be guardians to the evolutional process of humanity as it expands. I'm going to talk to you about feeling alone or feeling like you've got nobody when you do this work. When you do the shadow work and you come out of understanding that you're awakening to the fact that this world isn't actually created for the benefit of humanity. It's created for the benefit of only a few. Um, and then the understanding that we played our part as being the victim to that. And then understanding how to actually release actually release that victimization so that we can move into higher frequencies and no longer have the to and fro of victim versus perpetrator which is the fear game that we've been playing humanity's consciousness is beyond that but we have to also recognize that within our own psyche we have been diminishing and uh subduing um a part of ourselves which is that feminine hemisphere that collective uh connection to the etheric world to our souls to that that our eyes cannot detect but our inner eye can um we have a third eye for a reason and that's the exact reason for it so that we can enter it and understand more value of ourselves that our body is created through the um through the and and uh, how would i put that guides um i they're giving me a feeling and i'm trying to make i'm trying to find an english word for it it's a um, coming together of the energy alignment to create the physical world that is a tangible existence for us to experience this reality in. And when the soul decides upon that growth, it is formed as a speck within the womb as a light infiltrates it as the soul, then multiplies out from that frequency of the soul into the match of the of the parent and collectively create DNA strands and more particles to create the person or the, the body that one ends up growing into into this physical world so we're literally growing into the physical world but the soul has been on many many journeys and when that physical world has dictated to us that we have only a limited concept of just what we've been born into and nothing else past it we're not allowed to use our imagination either to create or shift our reality um then we get caught in this at what we would call a matrix um or it is a limited world uh of tangible only existence and now that we're starting to understand that we are waking up to that we're more than this um then we start to bring our power back and our power goes beyond what we've been taught at schools and all that sort of thing um it's a knowing that you probably many have had and especially those that are born now um have had of the the magical world that could be presented to them through deciding as a soul that that is something we can focus on and tangibly bring in even though it doesn't exist or it doesn't It isn't accepted in, in the condition of that program 
world, that logical world. Um, and the reason why we're going into all of that in depth of that so that you can have an understanding of that growth that we're doing. So what we do is we go on this journey and we understand that we're way more, that we have all of this information and wisdom that our souls carry. And you individually have your own soul's journey that you can attain wisdom from. You can actually pull through threads of understandings. Um, you don't need to read it in a book or anything like that. It's already present. When you start to realize that you are no longer victim to the scenario of being locked into a conditioned world that, that most of hum, the majority of humans were. So you become above it. And when you become above it, you start to, when you go out to mingle with other people, their vibration is not will not meet yours because they're still stuck in that lower vibration. So to protect yourself, we tend to withdraw from society, um, maybe go online or something like that, because that's at least one way of getting our messages out without the infiltration of other people's uh, physical energies and um, uh, really making an impact on you. Um, because most of us that have done this work, we, we can already navigate through the energy world. Um, and so we can put up our mirrors and our boundaries and understand how to protect ourselves. But when we go out into the physical world, uh, our empathy uh, starts to mingle very easily with others because we feel more. Um, and then we get suck, can get sucked into that storyline again of only limitation because that's what you're surrounded with constantly and it's like when they put a um, bacteria in a, a petri dish it will grow towards the environment that it is being placed into there's something to do with our environment makes a big impact in how we can hold ourselves together as well because when you're constantly going against what you're seeing by allowing your frequency to rise and become aware uh, above it, um, when you go into it physically, you can get sucked back in. So most of us want to spend our time alone. Um, and um, that's also because even if you did meet up with somebody who was of, you know, high integrity or whatever would have actually uh, done a lot of work there's still moments in that person's life where they will fall and they still got to unpeel certain layers or I mean they could be way way uh, have a bigger advantage when it comes to the spiritual world but then the physical world they get sucked back into again and so uh, even those that are really doing a great job um, we tend to still, until we know thyself so fully that we can step in, step out into the physical world as a master, we have grounded, we learn to ground our, um, our soul's lineage, our soul's understanding, our magnificence as that um, and become that and step out into the world as that, um, then you will find um, whatever circumstance you come across, you won't subside backwards to what was programmed into your logical brain of you being less than or feeling sorry for yourself or being a victim or uh, jealousy arising or um, any of that. It will all uh, be an understanding of it because you've become you yourself has become above it so it, it is quite a daunting experience when you do start awakening and then you see everybody starts to peel away and even those that you thought was you know really elevated or whatever um they they usually you would have put them on a pedestal and when they go through their shadow work they fall and then you start to think that well they don't know all the answers either and nobody really does um but you can know all the answers for yourself. And 
then when you start to become more in tune with who you are in that hermit stage, um, you become a magnet for that frequency that your soul already knows because you're now living you're living the soul's perspective as well as the physical perspective um, and what you've held in your logical mind. And so then that turns to become a magnet for others who resonate with you. And that's when the soul tribes start to form and come together. So it is a process and we have to allow the process to happen. Um, and we'll find that as we get closer and closer to our understanding of our soul as well, that the, the lessons that the collectives are going through, will go through them together. Um, and so you'll have many people going through the same sort of thing, uh, problem or issue. Um, usually that's, that's a sign that your collective is starting to pull together because when you talk to people they're going through the same stuff as what you're going through we we can like vary it's not like it's not like completely you know absolutely 100 percent all the time but um you'll resonate with the understanding of what someone else is going through as well but you still might decide to pull back and not be like really close friends or anything like that or soul tribes or mates or until you've actually peeled away and figured out who you are. So yeah, there's this whole journey and this whole process that we're going through, but it does, it will awaken eventually to you becoming the magnet for others to come in. And uh, that's when the real work starts because there's an absolute self-acceptance. There's an absolute um, self-support. And these are the words that we need to acquire before we create this new world. Otherwise, we will go out and feel that we're, we're the ones that know everything or we're the ones that everyone has to bow down to instead of seeing... Um, you as a whole being the one for yourself to create from but everyone else around you is part of that same wholeness instead of an individual and then seeing other people as individuals that's what the logical mind and the logical program does but the soul's program is completely different the soul's program understands that we are all collectively one together um, and so anything that is outside of us is in that moment part of your story. So how you interact with yourself is how you're going to interact with them. Um, and so if you've cleared a lot of your shadow work, you interact with them a lot easier. And you understand where they're coming from. And so everything becomes feeling based where um, we cannot lie to each other anymore either because it's literally a link to let the telepathic link, which is just a frequency understanding of each other in every moment of why people do what they do. Um, it's a connection. And this is the reason why I started the masterclasses as well, so that I could share we, with you guys these, this sort of information too and understanding that we are more than just this logical, physical world. Then when, when everybody starts to come together, and we come from a point of view where we love who we are. That means that we we have our understandings of our boundaries, what we, we're prepared to go through, what we're prepared not to go through and put up with, what we're um what we're prepared to share and create and exchange and all of that as well. Um the alignments that come together, each one of us, because we're connected to our soul and have all the soul lineage of all these different 
dimensions and planets that our soul has resided on, even animals and insects and all of that, is very collectively understood. It's almost like they're showing me you could reside as an insect on this planet and in in um, the same frequency that could also be presented as a Arcturian on an Arcturian planet. Um, it's like the animals represented on this planet can represent the beings that are on another planet and your soul exists in that moment as both. That's really cool. So the soul's journey could seem meaningless to from a human's perspective looking at that insect, but that soul's journey is actually taking on a whole other vibration, vibrational awareness of a different dimensional aspect that the soul wanted to try out to gain more wisdom and then when they end up becoming in human form uh, because, because there was an entry point with that insect coming onto earth they have the wisdom of that matching frequency with the Arcturians as well oh that's so cool so we see where all the wisdom comes from it's like an, an integral connection or a, a alignment of frequencies and there's so much more wisdom that can be attained from becoming certain avatars or bodies or um so then um when you collectively come together after you've done all the shadow work you've gone through the aloneness you've realized that you're the only one that can protect yourself in the end by self-support self-love and and then how your relations are with others is actually how your relations are with yourself. When you go through all of that and you collectively come together, it, there's you could decide before you were born here that you were going to mingle with, say, for instance, I'm a Palladian, which I know I am. Um, my soul comes pretty much straight from Pallades. Um, and then we have Arcturians. Um, that I channel through as well, and the Cyanians and Mother Earth and the Elementals. Um, but so my team might consist of witches and Elementals and wizards, and Arcturians and Cyanians and, you know, beings that have then been born through into a human form. And then we each have different aspects of my own self that collectively come together and there's an understanding of each other's wisdom and we literally ignite it within each other so we we um when we come together one person might know of, of a certain wisdom and absolute and this person's still trying to find it out and when you actually come together as a soul tribe this person will just go ding 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 i get that and they'll see it from their own perspective as if the message came to them even though it's this person's frequency that ignited it within them. And then they might ignite something within this person. So we become this more wholesome sort of collective. And it, they're showing me those, I think they say Mir Miriam, Miriams. I, sorry, I don't, the word flitted through my head and I, I don't very often think of that word. Um, but it's a lot of birds flying together like a, um, I think they're starlings, they're saying, or, and they're calling it, something starting with M, and they all fly and they make beautiful shapes together. Now, same with a school of fish. Um, they know where they're going because they become one in that moment. Mm -hmm their frequency alignment is of safety of self which then within their own knowing of who they are and the safety of themselves can merge with another and have absolute trust and faith that we're all going to move together and so then we we come into these communities 
and we have this understanding almost of what's needed to be done next for us to evolve into or ground some of this beautiful wisdom of uh, living with Gaia, with Earth, um, on this planet from uh, from all these different souls' perspectives. And we that's when we can come together and the meetings literally become telepathic. We're like, we just know what's needed to be done next through each other's frequency and sharing and understanding and and uh excitement and passion and desire and absolute there's an absolute and so you can share it with your mouth but uh when we go back to the universal language of telepathy or, or channeling um which is the universal language of all life outside of us that's why we can't speak with a mouth to a plant but you can actually vibrationally tap in and gain wisdom from that plant um it's sharing could be even to heal some part of your body or something um and so forth but there's a there's a higher awareness um that we're moving into almost like we all become the shamans um because we're all bringing in that soul's lineage where in the days gone by when only the logical mind was allowed to be in charge for a while then that was our actual lockdown that there was only appointed one or two shamans in a tribe or in a village because um it, 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 there was always going to be a thread of that coming through humanity's consciousness because it is who we are um and so it existed but it was only a minimal thread because of the lockdown that we had pulled ourselves into of only living with this limited, blinded kind of looking outside ourselves for all the answers and nothing from within us. Yeah, it's interesting where this has turned to because I thought I was going to start this off with talking about the loneliness that we feel um, when we are doing this work uh, but it seems to have evolved into way more um, messages that's coming through yeah so I think I will leave it there guys for this moment and uh, I wish you all the best for the rest of the week until I see you next time bye